All right, we have Brian joining me with CAIC. And of course, we're going to talk about all things Avalanche. We've got lots to go over. It is spring season, Brian. So can we start off there with a little bit of what to expect as we are gearing into the weekend? Yeah, you know, it is definitely spring. It's strong <laughs> April sunshine, but it's spring in Colorado, which means it's not always spring-like weather. And so we're in this period, we are oscillating between winter-like storms and then warm, sp sunny spring days in between. And so that uh, is a transition period for us in Colorado. And if I look at our homepage map now, you can see that statewide, we sit at moderate avalanche danger across the whole state. And that's because we have a few different varieties, common of spring of avalanches. Um, and that's what's driving the danger through the latter part of this work week and into the weekend. And as we talk a little bit about these storms and what's coming that way, we do have two different types of avalanche concerns that we should be kind of wary of. What do those look like? Yeah, and they, you know, they really illustrate well this transition from more winter-like snowpack into spring. And so on this top panel here is our persistent slab avalanche problem. And this is the avalanches that are breaking on older weak layers that formed very early in the season. This is still generally confined to higher elevation cold, dry, winter-like snow. And so you can see that this avalanche problem is mainly confined to the north side of the compass near and above tree line. So these are producing not incredibly likely, but very large and destructive avalanches. And so these are gonna continue to be the most dangerous aspects until we get much further along into our spring transition. However, on this bottom panel are the more likely, but smaller and easier to predict wet avalanches mostly coming in the form of loose wet sloughing and avalanches which can be dangerous there's more slower moving but they can uh, certainly you know bury or injure a person particularly if you get pushed into terrain traps and you can see those are mainly at the low elevations particularly on these sunny slopes that face kind of east through south through west and that's what we're going to be dealing with for thursday and into friday and then we get a really good freeze friday night storm system comes in and we will be back to more winter like concerns so let me show you what kind of that looks like um, so again the avalanche activity over the last week has largely been confined to these areas where we've got old snow persistent slab avalanche problems because the warm-up is just starting to take place at the latter part of this work week and what these large avalanches on these north through northeast facing slopes, and we've seen a lot of avalanche activity in northwest facing slopes with thinner, more dangerous snowpack, are these really deeply breaking and widely breaking avalanches, which resulted in some very close calls. And these kinds of things are very destructive and hard to walk away from. Um, here's just an example of a very close call from some skiers that took a ride in this avalanche. In the background, we've got some mountain goats in the foreground posing for us in front of this avalanche, but uh, this is the kind of terrain, this steep, rocky north and northwest facing terrain, which has been producing most of the most dangerous avalanches over the last week. Um, and then we've got this storm system rolling in. So you can see here the timestamp on the top. You can see the system rolling in off the California coast as a closed low. It brings some moisture to us starting Friday night and through Saturday. And snow totals are not, you know, overly impressive, but they're enough to generate a new round of fresh storm snow concerns. So you can see Friday night, the snow starts to pick up. And by the time we get through the end of Saturday, we're looking at those purple colors, which are in the 8 to 12 inch range, potentially even a little bit more in the park range north of Steamboat. And what that's going to do is create another round of avalanche instability in the colder, fresh storm snow, and it's gonna be producing avalanches like this. So you can expect as we move into the weekend, we're dealing with this storm snow, often falling on fairly slick crust from the good freeze we got on Friday, we're going to be warning about wind drifted snow like this, you know, up near ridge lines, and they're not, they're going to produce avalanches which are not as deeply breaking as those old snow problems we talked about earlier, but still big enough to bury, kill, or injure a person. And so here's some of the some examples from the last loading event, the last little snowstorm we got from last weekend. And we're going to see more avalanches like this as we move into the weekend. Um, this was a very close call um, up and behind Aspen uh, near the Lindley Hut where a uh, skier was caught in this small wind slab avalanche that was triggered and fully buried, fortunately walked away. So it is spring, it is very dynamic. We are oscillating between wet snow problems, new cold snow problems. Um, and as we deal with this transition, it's really important to keep up to date on current conditions because they're changing so rapidly. So make sure you get your avalanche forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche. 
and enjoy the fresh snow and the wild weather that often comes with Colorado in spring. Always. <laughs> it has to come that way. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for giving us the scoop on all things Colorado Avalanche. We so appreciate it as always. And uh, you stay safe out there as well, but also enjoy the weather. Thanks so much. We'll see you here next week. Thank you.